Today we are meeting Navigator's project investigator, John Karlsrud, research professor at the Norwegian Institute for International Affairs. Please introduce yourself and your research. Hi, uh, my name is John Karlsrud and uh, I'm a research professor at the Norwegian Institute of International Affairs where I've uh, over a number of years worked with uh, issues uh, mostly related to UN peacekeeping and international peace and security. But in the later years, I've been uh, broadening out my work to do more work on global governance and international cooperation. Please describe your role in the Navigator project. I am the principal investigator, I think is the technical term. That basically means that I'm the manager of the project. It's my responsibility to try to make this team work together and deliver uh, what we have promised to the EU Commission in the duration of four years. You're also welcome to highlight how your own research speak to the Navigator research agenda. So besides Navigator, I'm also leading a project called Ad Hocism, which is looking at how there is more, or the initial intuition is that there is more and more ad hoc cooperation between states, but also other actors, private actors, civil society, and so forth. And we're looking specifically at peace and security and health. And we find we're developing a data set of ad hoc coalitions in security, and we also defined it. And we find that there is an increasing prevalence of ad hoc coalitions. It's interesting because it kind of evades the kind of traditional categorization of international cooperation. Scientists have had kind of a preference perhaps for mapping formal actors, actors that have some kind of treaty. Only in recent years, there have been more research on informal cooperation. And we kind of extend that to look at ad hoc coalitions. That work was part of the reason that I found the call for this project so interesting. Because while ad hocism is looking at a specific kind of phenomenon in international cooperation, this call was quite open to analyzing how is global cooperation changing overall and more agnostic approach. So that was quite appealing. We are going now to the second phase of the question, which is introduction of Navigator. What key question does Navigator plan to answer? In other words, what are the main scientific puzzles and social challenges that are the core of the project? As I just uh, mentioned, we wanted to look more agnostically at how global cooperation is changing. And of course, this is a project funded by the EU. How is the EU and how should the EU navigate this increasingly complex landscape of cooperation, particularly taking into account geopolitical shifts, rivalry between China and the US and the war in Ukraine. This is making international cooperation quite difficult to navigate. And key questions for us is what type of factors should the EU emphasize when it's trying to balance effective with legitimate solutions to global problems. As principal investigator, how do you see the Navigator work? So Navigator is, uh, I guess, quite a typical uh, EU uh, Horizon uh, project. It has 13 partners from 12 different countries, four of them non-European, and it comprises a really strong, diverse global and interdisciplinary team of researchers who will work on different areas and look at how global cooperation is changing. One of the, the kind of the main ideas in the project is that we will examine, we will develop a joint methodology and then examine how is cooperation happening and changing in areas like climate change, finance, tax, digitalization, security, health, and migration. And then we'll try to pull that together and try to come up with some uh, general insights in each of those areas, as well as overall um, to what types of institutional mixes and forms of cooperation that the EU should invest in to 
have uh, a good balance between effective and legitimate outcomes. What is, in your understanding, the main societal purpose of the project? The general impact goal of Navigator is to encourage science-based, critical, and democratic dialogues and debates that tells us something about what's the current status and where is the multilateral global governance system heading? How are changing changes? Um, so these kind of external uh, events, the geopolitical shifts, the war in Ukraine, how populism uh, on the ground in many different countries, how are they affecting cooperation and multilateral institutions, cooperation, more informal cooperation arrangements across the policy fields that we're looking at? And finally, what should be the EU's responses? What kind of mixes should the EU go for and support in each of these different policy fields? And we don't expect to provide policy advice that are identical for each of the uh, issue areas. We expect that there will be quite different approaches depending on the issue area and uh, the mix of already existing cooperation in that area. Now about the scope of Navigator, who's involved in the project? Which actors have members of the consortium? The project uh, has 13 partners, as I mentioned earlier. And first of all, we uh, enjoy a geographically good variation of strong scientific partners in Europe. Within the EU, we have the Copenhagen Business School, we have Université Libre de Bruxelles, we have the University of Maastricht, we have Bocconi University in Italy, and we have the Tallinn Institute of Technology in Estonia. Then we also have, where I'm from, the Norwegian Institute of International Affairs, which is outside the EU, but still uh, in Europe. We have... Uh, the Hebrew University of Jerusalem in Israel. We have the uh, University of the Witwatersrand, Johannesburg in South Africa. And we have also the University of Ottawa and Waseda University. And finally, we have two impact partners, the, the European Council on Foreign Relations in Germany and the German Marshall Fund based in Brussels. So going on on the Navigator Impact Will the results of all this work be accessible to the public? Absolutely. That's a condition and I guess uh, I would say it's self-evident. This is knowledge that we want to share and that we would like for the general public to be able to, to access. We want policymakers to have uh, our more policy-oriented outputs and to be able to share them with them in meetings, in workshops, etc. And of course, we're also going to Uh, do more high-impact academic research. That's a strong ambition, and I'm certain that we will be able to do that. Yes, and you will also have a website, a blog, you will have a Twitter account as well. And the last question, what do you hope for Navigator? I hope that Navigator will be a project that will be able to help academics, policymakers and others to better understand how the international cooperation is changing. And it's really vital for us to understand There is an intuition, I think we all kind of see that there is less emphasis on the traditional multilateral organizations. But what does this mean for international cooperation? What does it mean for how problems are solved and for the effectiveness in solving these problems? And also the legitimacy of them. Are there changes ongoing that uh, we don't really see the consequences of as of now? And if we can help to shine a light on some of these changes and also give some advice, I think we would really make a contribution. So that's my hope for Navigator. Well, thank you very much for your time today, John, and for allowing us to better understand what goals Navigator is trying to achieve and how your team will work together to provide valuable advice to the European Commission. This is more than enough for our first episode. We look forward to further exploring Navigator in the series next installment, when we will welcome Ole Jakob Sending, a research professor at the Norwegian Institute for International Affairs and Navigator's methodological lead. <laughs>